and well known coach and administrator who will be joining us for the coach corner for the next 45 minutes. We hope that uh, our panel, not only our panelists, but uh, listeners who may have questions can either email us or call in directly and uh, let's challenge the coach for some advice and information. So, coach, um, Mindset is important in all aspects of life, and cricket is no exception. So, as a coach, I know it is an important factor. What are the key points for proper mindset when coaching, especially in this era of cricket? Well, first of all, thank you for joining us. This is our first show under the Cricket Hall of Fame's Coach's Corner. We reinvented this concept and it's uh, open to public. Anyone can join and ask questions. And uh, time to time, uh, Cricket Show's goal is to bring coaches and legends and maybe some experts to our future shows where we can interact and uh, know the game or like to know something you have a question or concern about the game itself. The bottom line is we are looking at a reason to educate America for cricket, but at the same time, we love to educate almost everyone out there globally who are our uh, listeners, viewers, if they are accessing our cricket video show. And time to time, what we have done on this show since 2010 is a promoting the game and bring more fans into the game. Going back to your question, mindset is the key. It's not just sports, almost our normal life or anything we do at work or anything we have on to-do list. It takes the mindset, but it is not a rocket science, I would say. It does not matter whether you follow cricket or other sport mind games, mindset is like almost 80% or more in order to succeed. So to do that, there are many uh, variations out there. It's not something simplest way to explain. But the four core points for the mindset is definitely desire, dedication, determination, and the daring. Means how you do discipline-wise. If I have to convert this thing into the cricket, the simplest way to explain is, I will go for the 6D. First of all, is the demand. You have to look into the present moment. The moment you are living in, even you are in the middle of the game, this moment call, what you can do next? Now that always depends on what's going on, what has been done, what level or stage we are, and what we're trying to achieve. So if you combine all those, you have to come out with the context. We call it demand. I can give you one simple example. Like today's game against Gujarat Titan versus Rajasthan Royal. Situation was like crazy. Rajasthan lost two big wickets for just two runs in three overs. But they still bounce back and do it. How? Understand the first. Couple of batsmen build the inning. They're taking closer to the goal, which winning, let's say, and they win it. They win it. But the first thing first is build the partnership and moving forward. So at that point, the demand was simple. Let's stay on the wicket, keep scoring as many as we can without losing wicket. It's the simplest thing to do. And more they went towards Let's say at the end of the 15 over, this demand is changed. Now they need some big shots, big boundaries. 
So at any moment during the game, whether you are a baller, batsman, or fielder, there is a demand. There is a something you can put into the game, and that is the most important thing. Once you got the demand, let's say today's game, uh, I think it's a 14 ball, they need something, 41 runs. So that's a demand. Now, do you have desire to achieve that goal? That is the second one. The desire in terms, you want to win it. You barely have just 14 balls. You have some wickets left. But now your entire desire is key because this is almost three runs a ball. It means you have to hit some big sixes. And that is what it stands for. What is your desire? Now, once you have desire, you have to follow the second step. Is it called a dedication? Are you going to dedicate with the desire you have to meet the demand of the game? And if you do that, then it definitely comes determination, which is the next, means very next ball. You have everything set for. Your best choice is what? Go for the maximum without getting out. Now, once we do that, we also need to have the discipline in place, which is the key to maintain this momentum or to achieve the team's goal or even your personal goal to make sure that like Hathmeyer wanted to stay until end of the inning without getting out. But at the same time, he put on some big runs, almost 50 runs, and some boundaries were really critical. And that's what it's all about. It You need to have the discipline into it. And even you put all these five, the last one is the biggest challenge. Then you are mentally challenged because of the game demand under the psychological pressure, which is another we call it. And during that situation, daring becomes the most important key. You already thought about it. You decided what you want to do. You already have a plan to do it. You can see the scorecard. You see the situation. But the best point is, if you understand, you have to live moment by moment, means ball by ball. We all know that. T20 is all about a game which can change the outcome, I will say, every ball. Team can be under pressure. Team can release the pressure. If it is coming down to the last ball, and if you need less than six runs, anything can happen. You lose the wicket. You lose. You score the six. You win it. You score some. You may tie. So if you look at it, that is where the daring comes. Are you able to decide or a quick decision making? And are you going for it? If you are hesitant to do it, then you will not accomplish. So coming straight forward to the question, I will say, based on the demand, player needs the desire, dedication, determination, and discipline to succeed. And that's a proper mindset. And top of that, you need a daring to execute. Uh, thank you, Coach. Hey, any questions from our panelists? Please feel free to, you know, yes. start with questions. Yes, Dennis, Dennis, I have a question for Coach. Coach, what part does concentration play in maintaining mindfulness of a player? Example, a player will be batting Broken the ball, getting the singles here and there, and all of a sudden he misses his head and go, tries to go over the top, get caught, or plays across the line. So my question to you is, what part does mindfulness, you know, he has to accomplish a goal and go, has to go gung ho, he gets one. So can, can you tell our listeners? What part concentration and mindfulness play in maintaining his focus? Okay, the concentration and focus both are part of the mindset theory, we call it. Concentration need to be there in order to succeed. But at the same time, the second factor, the focus, 
it becomes very important. And that can support your concentration. I can give you one example. Focus is not about staying focused with the one thing all the time. It will not work. You have to switch between on and off focus. Let me tell you why. After you play the ball, you look at the scorecard, look at the situation, analyze the current situation, and then look for the anticipation. What is next? How many balls left? What you can do next? That sort of thing. So that is the thing we call it off focus. Means you're trying to analyze situation. You are trying to analyze what you can do next without losing wicket or without losing it. If you are a baller, yes, you definitely like to have wicket. If not the wicket, then try to contain the run, means not give the runs. And at the top of that, you don't want to lose. So it depends on the situation. On and off focus becomes very important. One part of the on and off focus is the number game. Look at the situation. Look at the possibilities and then get ready. Once you come to that conclusion, means what do you want to do next for the next ball, then you have to switch on the focus to what you're going to do next or which is most likely the possible thing you can do. So instead of thinking about what I'm going to do for next 10, 15, 30 balls, you come down to that one next ball what you will be able to do for the next opportunity. So that's a focus on and off is the key. And nowadays, the way you look at it, crowd is cheering up, they even pumping you up for every accomplishment you have. Even you score the boundary, they cheer you up. If you are reaching the milestone about 50 or 100 or having a big partnership, they are cheering you up. You have the big scorecards, live scorecards, means you can see. You don't need to have somebody pass the message to you. What is the situation where you are and what is the demand or what are you going to do next sort of thing. So this on and off focus is always becomes key factor. Once you have that one, then you are, will be able to stay with the concentration with the things you do. When you lose that, there are many reasons you can lose. It's emotional factor, excitement, the concern. Then you have always in your mind, if you do certain things, especially in a game, there is a two factor also can force distracted. It means you're going to lose the concentration. Those are the always worry of outcome and fear of failure. So these are the lot of components stays together. But if you are good enough and staying back with the proper mindset, and if you know what can be done next or what is the best option I have for the next moment, and if you understand the present moment, then it's a way to stay focused and concentrate on the things you want to achieve. So it's not a rocket science, but the people usually get into either emotional or get angry about it, get frustrated, or sometimes it's excitement. So it depends on your mood. The concentration can change. And that is what they have to control and stay focused and keep the concentration. It's only possible if you keep your mindset intact. Don't let it go distracted. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, while I um, see if there are any more questions, Leon, we haven't heard from our brother Virgil, so possibly you call right and okay. find out what's well, happening with him while I ask Coach. Uh, Coach, you mentioned daring as one of the D's that's important in mindset. You know, in T20 cricket, the reverse sweep is used a lot by batters. Is that considered a daring move or so much in the world of T20 cricket? 
there is definitely a daring move but that move has a concern that you decided to go that way for two reasons number one if you play the simple cricket or normal cricket or old copy style book cricket how you play certain shots and those kind of thing when you look at that fielding if you feel that is not possible or you are hesitant to put that one because of the again worry of outcome then you are looking at the space open on offside because normally there is only one fielder in that quarter which is we call it third main area or deep point area and because of that you are switching to that shot to reverse sweep only reason is again you are hesitant to do certain things but now you want to do something so that's what he play now you may succeed on that a lot of players does but it depends on how much practice you do and what is the perfectness you carrying in and again that is what it comes on dairy how much confidence you have to go for the reverse sweep and score it we have it i believe to me is like one third people get caught out or not able to connect but then some of the good uh, batters are able to score runs on reverse sweep so reverse sweep is a kind of a daring shot but that daring is comes because of the other concern and that is what is in place okay so uh, as i said once again any questions we are open to uh, interrupt i have another uh, question but i will allow I, we have ivan board and we have gana and board so you know if they will want to come in okay so oh, i do yeah let's say hi to uh, ivan Well, it's a different mindset. If you look at the batsman, we also call it uh, uh, batter has to change the gears. What it means, you need to be high scoring gear. Means you are going for everything. You see the ball, you hit the ball. That situation means you have to strike every possible ball. That's a batter's mindset. Now. because of these so many games t20s are playing year around schedule is like really tight don't have much time for uh, wicket preparation and all those so we are looking at uh, wickets like a fatter and fatter means is not much variation coming from the pitch and even the variation comes from the pitch batter is ready to strike on every ball you deliver to them so what it is is basically game is decided by the runs so because of that everyone is chasing for the run so that's a one side that you have to keep scoring without getting out and that is the key or simple formula for the batter now the bowler side is little bit different here the most important part to me is bowler need to stay focused on containing or restricting runs that is the key think about it at the end of the 20 overs 
whether you take five wicket or eight wicket has absolutely no importance because the game will be decided by the scoring runs. But to get those wickets, this is what the most of the uh, games, what I see nowadays, when the bowlers are going for the wickets, they are throwing runs. If I see the West Indies uh, batsmen and uh, bowlers in IPL, let's say, if you sum up right now, you can say the West Indies batsmen are good. When they go for the sixes, people will love it because they are able to score, which is fine. They got the right mindset on that. But where is the bowler's mindset? Besides Sunil Narayan, I don't see anyone else is making any impact. And where they're going, they are throwing runs to them. So what's happening here is they need to change your style in T20. The most important part, if the ballers stay with the basics, which is all about do not let them score. And to do that, if you create moment of difficulty, which is you are trying to force a batsman from not scoring, but at the same time, if you force this batsman or if you confuse the batsman, then it definitely creates a moment of difficulty. And because of that, when they are in a discomfort about what to do, they will make mistake and the batter will give you wicket. So in order to create that moment of discomfort is, first you want to do is don't let them hit or let her hit. So you are trying to block the rubs. And now you are trying to deliver something which can confuse the barrel, whether first is definitely whether they want to play that ball or not, based on the line and length, let's say. And number two is they need to confuse about, you want to go with the straight bat or cross bat. And the third most important is, if you have length right, you're trying to confuse the barrel whether they want to come front foot or back foot or just they want the crease and play. Now, when you create that situation, then you have a higher chances that batter will make mistake and they will give you the wicket. So in order to do that, there's a lot of smart ballers you can see in especially T20 world nowadays. They play around and read the mind of the battle and they try to give a moment of discomfort. That's all it takes. If you don't let them score, they have to do something and that is what you need to do. But majority of the time we see the bowlers are attacking to go for the wickets. And sometimes they go like, I'm going to let them hit. And I will say, let's wait if they miss time it or they play the improper shot or miss something and you get wicked. Yes, that will cost you because the game has changed and batters are able to strike almost every possible ball. It has nothing to do with the length and line. They will figure out how to throw the bat at that ball. They will swing. If not swing, they have plenty of tricks. Scoop the ball, reverse sweep, it's, there's a plenty of option for them. So if you look at it, it's a mindset is the key, but at the same time, what they intend to do is more important. To me, I will say, if the baller bowls four over, and if I'm a coach, I'm not concerned about how many wickets this baller has took it. If this baller bowls a four over and give me like 10, 12 runs with the economy of a life, two or three, it is much better baller than anything else. But doing so, sometimes you have to live with the luck, a little bit of uh, surface, which is the pitch. If initial stage, if you get some wickets, it's a great because when you take those wickets, it definitely creates the game pressure, the psychology pressure to the opposite team. But don't forget, T20 is a different world. 
is not about you grab first three, four wickets quickly. The middle order batsman can come and change the game. It's not about the opening stand, which put like, let's say, 100 partners. It doesn't mean it will put you in a winning column because all of a sudden you see the middle order collapse or tail header did not work. So it is, this game is a completely uncertain. And to do that, you have to follow the simple rule. Game is not over until it's over. Means you got to wait for that 20 overs or the team gets out, means all out. And because of that, I will say we are not able to see the all out. If you look at majority of the T20, it's not going to happen. Like we barely see all out, maybe like after 17, 18 overs, something like that. But in most cases, all out is impossible. So the baller has to focus more on restricting the runs and creating moment of difficulties for the batsman. I have a question. I have a question. Right. Okay. Uh, yeah, we know that T twenty cricket is predominantly uh, a game for for the batsmen because people are really coming into the stadium to watch the sixes just flying out the stadium over over the ropes and the players. But don't don't you think um, it is time to inject like um, something on behalf of the bowlers? Let's say. One or two bowler, you know, one or two bowlers that the lead may, may be able to bowl a fifth over, even in T20, because um, you know the the, the the batsman can can switch hit, um, he, he can um, cook, he can you know do all kind of all kind of stuff. Don't don't you think it's time for them to put a a a, a little edge? Uh, on the bowler that are even to limit the wide, you know, you know, let's say if the, the wide foot on the leg that um have some some sort of mark that, you know, within that uh, six inches from the wicket it would make all a wide. What is it about? Well it's I love this question and I will not be surprised that a uh, few years down the road this may change the rule. If you look at it uh to me when I compare baseball and cricket, cricket is more going towards the baseball way. Until now, they were only counting home runs, sixes, nothing else. And now the change they got this year in IPL is called an impact player. Means during the inning, you can substitute someone for other role and they can come out and do it. Until now, uh, the 12th man, an extra uh, players on the bench were not allowed to do uh, anything on field except the fielding. So now the world is changing. Now we can see, let's say you're going in with the six ballers and all of a sudden you realize that I need to have the seventh baller from the bench. You are just going for a substitution with the impact player and this player comes and turn into a seventh baller. And he or she okay. is also able to the four overs. But going towards that one, I will not be surprised to go that one, just like the baseball. Baseball does not have limit to change the pitcher. Coach decides how long you want to keep with this pitcher and you want to change it. And the way this uh, game is going on, I'm 100% with you. And I love to see that change. I will say, uh, maybe two or three bowlers need to be allowed to bowl up to six overs. Then you can have the really competition because now you are challenging a good bowlers to go extended time in the game who can challenge the batters. And uh, uh, to me, I will say it's not about per player how many overs. I think down the road we will see it might go baseball way. The bowler can bowl up to 10 overs, let's say if it is too good, and what's wrong with it. We're doing test, we're doing ODI. If you want to make it this exciting and uh, create a more difficulty for the scoring, I will say they need to go remove the limit because nobody's going to bowl more than 10 overs in 20 over a uh, uh, T20 game. And uh, if somebody is too good, like why don't we just challenge? Let them bowl 10 overs. Let's see what economy rate they can maintain or 
how much uh, run they can concede or how many wickets they're taking. That's a very exciting feature to have it. But again, it will take a time. Uh, the T20, the way I look at it, the rules change and the game processes are changing year by year. It's a more of a fan base. What the fans are excited about, what the fans are looking for as excitement. And those are the changes coming. And again, I will not be surprised if the bowler is allowed to bowl five, six, or maybe up to 10 overs in the future. Let's hope so. And that is the biggest challenge, I will say, because then you are really dealing with the two or three specialist bowler who can challenge you for 20 overs. Okay, thank you, coach. Okay. Five, no, I was not wanting to follow, but I wanted you to open another can of worms because how can you correct a, a, a player who has lost his focus, lost his mindfulness? Case in point, Sam Cohen presently is the most, the highest paid individual in the IPL 16. Today he's struggling. What could you do? I remember the left armor. From, from Jamaica, play West Indian player. He was given a, a million dollar contract and he has not gotten one since then. He, since he has been hit, Sheldon Cottrell. Cottrell. He has not been given another con uh, contract since then. How, to, how could you uh, rectify his performance? What would you say to him? What would you do? And what would you put action you put in place? Coach, just I before did. you answer that, Coach, just before you answer that, can I just remind our listeners that uh, they're listening to the cricket show and they call in to join us at one five one five six zero five nine eight five zero. And reminder, coming up at the top of the hour, we'll have Audrey Watson will join us with the Walter Henry birthday and anniversary hour. So get your date prepared and be ready to uh, with your special. Happy birthday. Thank you. Uh, the most important part playing in T20 is not about who you are or what you have done or what you have achieved. You need to live in current moment. The day you took the field, it's all about how good you are, what capabilities you have, or what are the potentials you have? That is what these private franchise teams are paying you to perform. But at the same time, there's a lot of players, either they get higher paid or have achieved a lot or something. They'll be more challenged by too many, I will say. For example, Sam Curran. He is a good baller. He was the MVP for that World Cup. And all of a sudden, you're going in IPL. So now look at the other side. It's not about Sam Curran is doing something different. He's doing normally what he does. But unfortunately, his challengers out there who wants to knock him out. They don't want to let you have that age which you carry. Because they all have in the head like, well, this is a million dollar boy. Come on. I'm going to take care of it. So he is challenged by too many, not just one. And unfortunately, there are players. Either they are coming up, grooming, inexperienced, but they got the opportunity to do something here. Now these are the people or players going to take this challenge. Because for them, there is nothing to lose. But if they try something and do great against such baller, their value goes up. So that's one side. Same thing on the batter side. If you look at Virat Kohli, any game he plays, think about it. Every baller wants to get him out. And they are serious okay. when the ball against the Virat Kohli. So you're dealing with this extra pressure. So to deal with this pressure, the proper mindset is most important, which 
if I compare this IPL, let's say five game between Sam Curran and Virat Kohli, I will go with Virat Kohli. He is able to maintain his mindset. He is a composed player. He deals against each and every baller, one ball at a time, and he is still scoring. Where Sam Curran lost it. He was not able to stay focused and maintain what he wants to do. And few times, I believe two games, when I watch him live, he's trying to do something different. It's usually he just want to knock it out, get the wicket quickly. But at the same time, you are taking a huge risk, especially for the Yorkers. Yorkers are only good if those are the most accurately, effectively, or precisely bold. Otherwise, the same Yorker can turn into a full toss, can go wide. So it has a risk involved. So the baller has to know what exactly they're trying to do. So there's a mindset is a big thing. And the people who maintain it, these are the good performance. Like uh, when you say uh, Cottrell, and if I have to compare, let's say the balance side, why these uh, Dwayne Bravo, the champion, for so many years did well in uh, IPL, then he can have uh, Powell also did well, right? So, uh, Polar, sorry. The Polar did well. Why? And why you are not able to produce the same type of player who are currently in West Indies? Because there is a huge gap, and that gap is the mindfulness. Mindfulness is there. Go ahead. I was asking you, Coach Joe, what idea would you put into the player's head? At least, if not solve the problem, Turn them around. Yes, uh -huh. That will get coached into so, the mindset to become better. Yeah, players. and the mindset is not the term, is not a simple Bible. And uh, I believe we are starting that series also on mindfulness. The first most important part is, I will say, what is mind? Where it is? What it does? how it works before you try to control it. At the same time, you need to understand what is the mind capable. Mind controls your entire body, believe it or not. And once you read that target, yeah, once you target and know how to control your mind, then the mindset works. It's not somebody tells you to do certain things, they're going to fix it. I was saying, though, a player like Colin is not performing. You drop him and you, you just like him, you did not give Cottrell another contract and he's almost dead. So my question just to keep him, you know, happy, satisfied and improving and go back to his normal self. Now these players has to understand these are the experienced player, expert, adults, grown up, you have to go back and do your homework. What went wrong where your performance goes down? In today's competitive world, whether it's cricket or any other sport, every athlete or player has to, has to maintain that performance. And at the same time, you must keep continue improving it. The day you stop learning, your downfall starts. All right. Thank you, Benny. Thank you. Yes, uh, Virgil, are you there? Say hello to us so we know you're not asleep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm here. Oh, All right, good, good. We make sure, make sure you're not going in meditation. I come to what you guys are talking about. <laughs> um, you guys are talking about the performance of the bowler. How can the bat the Batman have? can stay in there for 20 over. The ball will only have four over the ball. But we always remember, once you get a big contract, you are under a lot of pressure. 
he he did guys have a cap and said maybe five hundred thousand dollars, four hundred thousand dollars. I think a lot you'll get a lot more out of these players because they'll play more. If everybody else moves under the same umbrella with that kind of money, you'll get a lot better out of the players because you feel more freely to pay. But when you have the most, you you have the highest contract, a million dollars. You want to go and perform so bad that. It's hard for you to really um, perform because you, you're pushing yourself. You want to try things and you're pushing yourself so much that you're making yourself fail. And I think it's the money why you see some of these guys. Some of these guys are some bad spells. But because of the money, the amount of money some of these guys get, they want to do so good to to at least to reward you for what you pay them. And it's very, very, very hard. And they go under pressure. And I think that's one of these guys' biggest problem right now. So again, I can add the comment on that one. You, you, we have to understand if it is a battle, let's say if it is a battle, to score 50, you may have to face 50 balls. Yes, you can cut down number of balls if you can score sixes and fours, let's say. Uh, but top of that, it's not possible to score 50 in a one ball. And in during this process, you are taking those number of balls you face. Those are the number of chances you're taking. Means there is a risk in wall to lose the wicket. Think about that side. If you are a baller, you have to think the other way. You are only allowed to bowl four overs. That's a 24 deliveries in this game. Batsmen put the price yeah. on their wicket. They don't want to lose the wicket that easily. Then baller has to fix their head not to give them the runs that easily because you need to look at the other way. You have opportunity to take wicket on every ball, but are you bowling for the wickets? So it's like a, a very simple strategy. A lot of good ballers try to maintain and try to sustain runs, not to give them easily. And when you do that, those are the successful ballers. In today's world, when you are looking this too many professional, it does not matter how good baller you are, they will score on you. So your bottom line is simple. Can you contain? Can you sustain some? Yes, you cannot ball like a maiden over. It's not possible because there is a bat going to be in place for every ball. But can you limit the runs? If you can do, then it will definitely make an impact. And that is what the ballers has to do. The smart ballers are relying on slow delivery, change of space, change of line, change of land. They are keeping more on variation to confuse the batsman. And those are the successful things. If you are just bowling fast or quick, yes, they have some advantage. But in today's world, you got more disadvantage. Batsmen will score on you. Another question I do have here. Another. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Um. I, ahead. I know it's important to. I know it's very important to be an economical bowler when in, in, in this format. But wouldn't you? Uh, I, I mean, with all the the, the, the misery deliveries you're going to bowl, um, if you you should. Some, unless you have bowlers are bowling and taking wickets, in the end it almost goes for naught because um, it, you're gonna have um, maybe less score. But then when they look in the end, they're gonna have a, a whole lot of wickets when they can go hee ho. So I, I think with all what is happening, you have to have some bowlers that, that that can contain the battle somewhat, and then have uh, you know one or two other bowlers. They may not be as economical. But they're getting wicked because you have to get wicked in the meantime. Not not just um, you know, the, um, try to 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 prevent them from scoring. But in the meantime, we need to get some wicked because they're going to be having a, a stack of wickets in the back end, and then that's when they're going to go evil. What do you think about that? So that is a simple rule uh, in the today's world. If you want to succeed, it's a very simple. Try to get those wickets by not letting them score runs on you and try to maintain your economy rate lower and lower. If you do this simple thing, you can succeed. 
But if the baller changes his head, like I'm going to bowl like short pitch bouncers or something little bit outside off term, like a half pull shot or something like that. And then you are expecting like batter going to make mistake and give you wicket. It will cost you because we have the big hard hitters. Boundaries are getting smaller. So those, those are things. It's like a baller has to have a proper mindset. It's not about taking wicket, but at the same time, try to deliver each and every ball where the batter cannot score on you. That's a key. And if you do that, then you'll be able to maintain your economy lower. And it, believe it or not, if the people does that, then the batter has a job to do is to go behind you to score runs. And that is what the time you are forcing the batter to give the wicket. It's not about taking wicket. We want to force the batter to give you the wicket. Thank you, Coach. I think what we're taking away from this is that mindset and mindfulness are vital contributors to players' success in this C20 era. And uh, I think uh, Virgil touched on a point here where we saw last year uh, the, uh, West Indian uh, captain, C20 captain then, uh, Foran, was given the highest contract. And of course, the following year, which is this year, the uh, team, the franchise that gave him that large contract that he had not performed. So they did not retain his contract, and uh, this year now he appears to be performing again. So, is it mindfulness? Is it a mindset? Or it is a part of it. It is a part of it. When you yeah. say Puran, when he was in an old team, the team has a different chemistry. Team has a different plot. Let's say is it? This is the team sport. It's not about one man show or one performance. And uh, any good player can win the matches, but to win the championship, you need a team. So it's all about not the individual performance, but is your individual performance is helping the team performance and the team outcome. That is to become the major factor. Now to do that, it is does definitely impact your mindset process because now your demand will be changed. And then you have to set forth your desire to meet that demand. So we are going back what we started. It's always look for the demand, set the desire, dedicate, go with the full determination and have some discipline. If you follow the same cycle, the way to succeed is there. Uh, thank you so much, Coach Patel, for your insights and knowledge. And uh, we are certainly looking forward to your uh, return uh, next Sunday. We're inviting our listeners and our families to remember that next Sunday, at the same time, 6.15 until the hour of 7, we'll be having another coaches Corner. So be prepared in your questions and, of course, Let's see if we can stop Chris Patel next Sunday, next when he comes back to join us.